As you know, the 24 second clock is going to be modified in the 11-12 season to display tenths of a second when there are less than five seconds remaining in the countdown. There's no change to the length of the countdown. However, this inclusion of tenths on the clock required some fundamental changes to the way the countdown has been displayed. While the new clock will provide referees with more precision when using it for reference, the new display will also affect how coaches, players, and referees use the shot clock to gauge elapsed time especially when using it to time an 8 second violation. This video will help explain the changes to the clock and how to use it properly to gauge elapsed time. I'm going to use these three clocks throughout the presentation to show the countdown. This top clock is going to show elapsed time. It's going to count up. The bottom two clocks are going to be the shot clocks, the old one on the left and the new one on the right. Both of these will count down. Notice here in the far right corner where the new clock is going to display tenths. Now we're going to watch a countdown. Lapse time starts at zero. Both clocks are showing at 24. Now we're going to advance one tenth of a second. Notice first that after the countdown has commenced, the old clock still shows a 24 and it's going to do so for the first second of the countdown. The reason this is necessary is that if the clock immediately changed to a 23, Later, when one second remained, without being able to show tenths, the clock would show a zero for a full second before the buzzer went off. So become clearer when we watch the clocks expire. On the other hand, since a new clock does have tenths in the final seconds, it can immediately change to 23, and the countdown will expire when the clock ticks from 0.1 to zero. Notice that the clocks will show 24 on the old clock and 23 on the new clock for the duration of the first second. Here we've reached one full second in the countdown. You'll notice that both clocks show 23 seconds. Every full second, both clocks will align. But once we advance one-tenth of a second more, you'll notice the new clock moves to 22, while the old clock remains on 23. This is a reoccurring theme as the countdown commences. Each full second, the clocks will align. Now we're going to fast forward so we can see the eight-second rule. Going to slow down again as we approach seven seconds because you'll notice that the way the countdown is displayed, the new clock is going to reach 16 before eight seconds, and therefore it cannot be used to reference an eight second violation. As we approach eight seconds, you'll see what happens. As the eight second count approaches, the old clock still shows 17, and the new clock shows 16. So as the 8 second count is reached, the old clock ticks to 16. And this change from 17 to 16 is how coaches, players, and referees have traditionally noted the 8 second mark. But since the new clock already ticked to 16, we have to wait until it ticks to 15 to note the 8 second count. And this occurs as soon as the 8 second count is completed. And here it ticks to 15. Now we're going to speed things up to the 5 second mark. I'm going to slow down again as we near the five second mark. And the first thing you'll notice is that the old clock is showing a six while the new clock is showing a five to indicate that there's more than five seconds left remaining in the countdown. But as we hit the five, both clocks line up. And then once we tick forward one tenth, the new clock displays tenths of a second to show the countdown while the old clock still shows a full number five. Speed things up again till we get to the last second. Slowing down now again as we hit the final second. When we reach the final second, clocks align. And once we enter the final second, the new clock shows a zero in the remaining tenths, while the old clock continues to show a one. Now it should be clear now as to why we needed to show a 24 for a full second at the beginning of the countdown with the old clock. If it didn't work this way, the clock would show a zero until the buzzer went off for a full second. This way it shows a one and then buzzes upon completion of hitting zero. The new clock, however, because it shows tenths, can show a zero and the remaining tenths and will buzz when the clock ticks from point one to zero. I'm 
That concludes this presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Joe Borgia or Donnie Vaden.